topic is surgeries um, of any type, top or bottom, and just the general requirements that I usually see surgeons and or insurance companies requiring. So um, top surgeries, we'll start with that. Those are generally the easier to qualify for, um, and this would more so be masculinizing top surgeries. Feminizing top surgeries, it's pretty hard to get insurance companies to cover that because they consider that cosmetic, whatever. Anyways, um, now surgeons generally, you know, they'll do top surgery for masculinizing, feminizing, they don't care. Um, their requirements may be somewhat along the same lines as insurance companies, depends on the surgeon. And that's gonna be my point of the day is that the requirements for surgery are going to differ surgeon to surgeon. There is no real standardization amongst them. Some, very few, don't require anything at all other than you see them for an evaluation and they will go ahead and take cash money from you to do the surgery. Um, now, if you involve insurance companies, it gets more complex, but we're talking about just surgeons for right now. Most surgeons on their own are going to require at least a letter from your hormone prescriber, um, such as myself or you know an endocrinologist or your primary care who's supplying you with hormones, just whichever. Um, most are going to require at least a letter from your medical provider uh, who is prescribing hormones. Some may also require a mental health letter, not all. Uh, now, if you involve insurance in this, um, then it doesn't matter what the surgeon is requiring if it's less than what the insurance requires. So, for example, if your surgeon only requires that you hand them money and, you know, and they do their own evaluation, that's great and all, but if your insurance company requires that you have a letter from me and a mental health person, well, then that's what has to happen in order for your insurance company to cover it. And that is the most common requirement from insurance companies for top surgery um, is gonna be a letter from your hormone prescriber and also a letter from a mental health person, be that a therapist or psychiatrist or whatnot. Um, so anyway, that covers top surgery general requirements. Oh, and another point, every now and then you'll also see an insurance company require that you be on hormones for a certain length of time. That length of time is usually one year. Um, anyways, so on to bottom surgery. Bottom surgery goes about the same. Um, surgeons are going to require uh, for bottom surgery. I haven't heard of anyone who will just one off and do it without any letters or anything. Um, and I haven't yet heard of any who will do it with just um, a medical provider signing a letter. I'm, they may be out there, I just haven't heard it yet. Uh, most commonly, surgeons uh, without insurance or anything are gonna require a letter from your um, hormone prescriber and also a letter from a mental health person, you know, verifying that you're trans I and mean, whatever anyway. Um, and then they could also require that you've been on hormones for minimum length of a year. And sometimes this, the length of time of being on hormone therapy isn't really as gatekeepy as it seems. It's actually related to healing and or the changes that hormones can induce in your skin. And they want you to have gotten past that first stage of changes that it can do in your skin before they operate on you, which just makes good sense. Um, so that part isn't as gatekeepy as it seems. Um, the letters can get kind of gatekeepy there. Um, because what can happen is if you're involving insurance, which most people that are doing bottom surgery are gonna probably need insurance involvement because that stuff gets a little bit pricey. Um, but anyway, so bottom surgery insurance requirements are most commonly going to be that you have been on hormone therapy for a minimum of one year. You're going to need a letter from your hormone uh, prescriber, such as myself or you know whoever. Uh, and then you're also going to need not one, but two letters from mental health professionals. And they usually have to be written, all these letters need to be written within a certain amount of time. They like the fresher the better, at least within the last year. And every now and then you'll find some really particular insurance company that wants you to have had at least one of the letters within the last like 90 days or something stupid like that. That's not as common, that just happened like one time and I was just like, wow, 
what the crap. Anyways, um, let's see. So bottom surgery insurance requirements generally going to be um, on hormone therapy for at least a year, a uh, letter from your hormone prescriber, two letters from mental health professionals, and then watch out for this other gatekeeping tactic that they will use for these mental health providers. They will say two letters, but one of those letters from the mental health professional is gonna have to come from someone with a doctorally prepared degree in mental health, meaning, um, you know, a lot of therapists and stuff are well prepared at, you know, like the master's degree level. And there are some few that are prepared at like the bachelor's degree level, um, you know, and I'm certainly not saying anything bad about them uh, because I think they do their jobs very well. But insurance companies, like I said, more as a gatekeeping tactic, I feel. Uh, will require that you find someone who is a uh, doctorally prepared, meaning they either have a PhD or an MD uh, behind their name, uh, essentially, so that they can say they have a doctoral degree um, to practice in the mental health care field. And I mean, a lot of, you know, there are therapists, regular, you know, therapists that have that. There are, you know, the psychiatrists, psychologists that may have MD behind their name or PhD um, depending, uh, but anyway, that makes it just a little more difficult, not because those folks are less likely to write a letter, but because they're fewer in number, and so therefore a little bit more difficult to find and then get in with and get that second letter or whatever. So, I mean, personally, if you're at the very beginning of the game of getting your letters, I would advise you to first look for someone who has that doctoral degree so you can just knock that crap out and get that out of the way first. And then, you know, do your second opinion, which could be, you know, your, uh, your doctorally prepared therapist who's either a PhD or an MD or whatever, they could then refer you for the second opinion to someone, you know, at any level of education, the master's degree, it could be another PhD, MD, whatever, but they could then refer you for that second letter. And at least you got the more difficult one to find out of the way in the beginning. Um, so anyways, uh, that was my, uh, my little talk about uh, requirements for top and bottom surgery. Basically, it can differ just about among any surgeon and any insurance company. Each one, surgeon or insurance company, is going to have its own specific requirements. Um, I have seen in other states, so, you know, I'm a nurse practitioner, and um, there are some very few insurance companies that don't want a letter from me. Apparently, I'm just too stupid to be able to write a letter even though I'm one of the very few people that even practice this kind of medicine in this state. But um, it can happen. So you definitely need to call your insurance company and talk to them specifically about the, the um, types of providers that are acceptable for writing the letters that they need to qualify you for this. Because it is an extremely big gatekeeping tactic that they have to not spend money because let's face it insurance companies are not in the business to spend money on this stuff and uh if they can avoid it they will and so um get in contact with them find out what their requirements are because i can almost guarantee you their requirements are going to be more stringent than what the surgeon themselves require um but anyway and then the second step would be locate a surgeon that you are interested in uh doing your surgery and I do recommend getting, you know, two if you can do two different consults. But I understand sometimes you ain't got the time and sometimes you ain't got the extra cash to do those two different consults and opinions. Although I really recommend it. If you're going to do bottom surgery, see at least two people to get their opinions on what types of procedures uh, you are a candidate for and everything. You do not want that kind of surgery happening by just the first person you run into. Um, but anyways, so... Get your letters in line, line up the surgeon you want to see. Um, as always, you know, I'm available for questions and whatnot. Um, but those are the general requirements you'll see. Um, and also the whole one year on hormone therapy. I've only ever seen one company require two years. And then I've seen a couple that only required six months. <laughs> Whatever. Um, and then sometimes they'll throw in crap like you had to have been seeing 
the mental health practitioner, at least one of them or whatever, for at least six months or something like that because of the DSM criteria to qualify for the gender dysphoria diagnosis has to be persistent and consistent for a minimum of six months. So sometimes they'll throw out that as well. It's all part of the game and you just got to learn the rules. What can I say? The world is crap sometimes with that stuff. But if you learn the game and you learn the rules, you can play it better. So get out there and do it.